Ravens offense is always a big topic of discussion, uh, but this year seems to be a bit different. It seems to be a lot more optimism surrounding Baltimore Ravens offense. Of course, they made the big change going from one Greg Roman, who had a lot of success over the years with this Ravens offense, to now new offensive coordinator Todd Munkin. Uh, they brought in guys like Odell Beckham Jr., uh, Nelson Aguilar. Via the draft, they brought in Zay Flowers. Oh, yeah, and of course, they, they re-signed Lamar Jackson, so that was pretty big. But what can we really expect from this Baltimore Ravens offense? How good or great can they possibly be? How far can they go? And what are some things that we should also be concerned about? Well, we're going to talk about all those things and more, but I couldn't do it alone. So in this episode, I had to bring on a very, very special guest to help us answer all those questions and more. Team Keep It Clean, let's get to it. Yeah, this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it, how to made it. Boy, he's a fan and he like the Ravens. Like the Ravens. And you know just what I mean. Team Keep It Clean, a very, very special guest in the building, uh, my guy Cordell Woodland, um, who covers the radio. You know, before we get into it, introduce yourself to everybody. Let them know where they can find you at. Let them know what it is that you do. Yeah, uh, my name is Cordell Woodland. I'm uh, with 105.7 The Fan here in Baltimore. I cover the Ravens and the Orioles. I also host Shaking It Up Sports uh, weeknights on The Fan as well. Um, you could follow me on Twitter and Instagram uh, at Cordell Woodland, just how it sounds, C-O-R-D-E-L-L-W-O-O-D-L-A-N-D. -L -L cool, man. Appreciate that. Now, how did you get started covering the Ravens and the Orioles? Yeah, man. Um, kind of a, a, a little bit of a long story. Um, so Go for it. I, I was originally working years ago. Um, mm. I was originally working because I am from D.C., uh, so I was working in the federal government in D.C. Um, and I was, you know, not regular nine to five, good benefits, making good money. Uh, and I may be 22, something like that. Didn't go to college. Well, I was, went to college and I, I basically stopped mm -hmm. um, because school was really never my thing. Me too. And, I feel you on that. You know, I, yeah, it, it was just never I was going just to kind of go, to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But I never really found what it was that I was interested in while I was there. All the yes. prerequisites and everything was really turning me off to college because I felt like I wasn't able to actually take the classes that I wanted to take to get me to where I wanted to be. Mm -hmm. um, so I ended up working in the government and um funny thing it was it was actually a, a paid internship and you know like I said I was making good money and everything but mm -hmm. it just wasn't fulfilling I, I was getting up early every day to go to a job I didn't like going mm. to to work for a boss that I didn't like working for mm. and I just didn't want to be one of those people that grew up complaining about his job you know what right. I'm saying I, like I, I felt like I was just young enough to where I could take my life by the reins at that point instead of kind of just forfeiting my future into something that sure I probably would make good money and everything but mm -hmm. money isn't everything you know what I'm That's saying true. and it's like if if you're unhappy and and you're making money it is it's just we we see all these rich you know celebrities and them that go through it man and you know sometimes it doesn't end well so that right there lets you know money isn't everything but right. you know um I, I and sports was always my passion and i would even when i worked in the government i'm i was known as the sports guy in the <laughs> building anybody that wanted to talk sports would come talk to me about it so yeah. um and and it, i've always you know sports has always been kind of like my first love especially football mm -hmm. so you know, I kind of just figured, like, why not go into something that I actually enjoy doing? So mm -hmm. I went into radio broadcasting school, um, and they paired me with a mentor who worked at the Nationals ballpark. And uh, Steven Strasburg is making his debut, and I'm there. 
and my mentor is working and ESPN 980 is broadcasting outside. And that's with the old legendary John Thompson, former coach of Georgetown and Doc Walker and all those guys. Chuck Sapienza was the producer of that show. Who's the boss, uh, my boss now at one Oh five seven. And I used to call in the John Thompson show all the time. I was an everyday caller. And so they knew me. Um, so my, my mentor went and gave them, he, he went out there and talked to them, talked to Chuck and Chuck gave him his information and told him to just tell me to hit him up. So I did, they hired me for an internship. Uh, I worked there for a year. They ended up picking me up to actually be a, a real employee after that year. Mm-hmm. So I'm board hopping, but then they start adding things onto my plate. I'm able to cover the Capitals. I'm covering the Wizards. I'm covering mm-hmm. the Georgetown. I'm covering, uh, who else? I mean, pretty much every team, the Nationals, you know, I, I covered every mm-hmm. team in the D.C. area other than the commanders, than the Redskins. Um, and it was a lot going on, man. And I'm, I mean, I'm in one of the major markets. I'm like 23 years old, by far the youngest person in these media rooms. And mm-hmm. uh, I'm, I'm cl- you know, one of the few black people in the media room. So mm-hmm. I'm sticking out like a sore thumb. And while it was, I was getting everything I wanted to do, um, I think I wasn't, just looking back on it, I don't think I was really mature enough to handle everything that was on my plate. I, I think mm-hmm. I got a little complacent. So mm-hmm. I went um, on a birthday trip to Miami, and I thought I took a couple of days off, came, came back. Turned out I was actually supposed to work. <laughs> and long story short, I ended up, I ended up getting fired because we were the flagship. <laughs> Oh um, man, the Orioles at that time, and the golden sin in radio is no dead air. Mm. So, I was, mm. I didn't know I was supposed to be there. Man, it may have been about <laughs> 45 minutes of dead air <laughs> uh, going on. And this, like I said, they're the flagship of the Orioles at that point, so it goes beyond me. So, Chuck yeah. Chapman, who's my boss now, was all I, and by this time, he ended up being my boss at ESPN 980. Mm. He had to fire me. He yeah. had like he, he he was like it's out of my hand. It was my first screw up that I had had, and he just mm. like you know it's out of my hands. I don't want to let you go, but it, it's it's over me at this point. Yeah. So you know I'm I'm <laughs> I'm out the business, and it, it it all just starts crashing down on me. Like man, I don't know what I'm going to do. You know what I'm saying like it's so it was it's so hard to get into this business, um mm. especially in that market. And so I'm like, I, I don't know what I'm going to do now. So for a while, you know, I, I decided to go back to school. I mm-hmm. went to Morgan and um, I'm majoring in communications, broadcast journalism. And my senior year, they're having a sports seminar and I wasn't even going to go. And then one of my friends showed me the rundown of the guests that are going to be there. Mm-hmm. And I knew everybody that was speaking. And Chuck oh, Sapienza cool. was one of them. <laughs> so this was the first time I had seen Chuck since then. So uh-huh. I go in there and Chuck remembers me and, you know, it's all love. And he's like, you need a job? Well, he's like, you know, if you need anything, let me know. And I'm like, well, I could use a job. So he mm-hmm. picks me up. I'm at the fan. I'm board hopping and everything. And then I'm, you know, as I'm there, I'm starting to get more responsibility. So mm-hmm. eventually I end up producing Inside Access with Jason Lock and Ken Wyman. Mm-hmm. And I wanted more, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm growing, but I'm not where I wanted to be. And I just wanted to get on air. It got to a point, especially the pandemic really started to weigh on me. Like, man, I, I, oh, I need yeah. to do something else. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I got to the point to where it's like, and I even told Chuck, like, and it was no disrespect to Jason and Ken. Those guys were great to work with still are mm-hmm. to this day. Um, but it was just like, I feel like I should be putting my show together. Not, mm-hmm somebody else's and I I had to kind of jump off the bridge a little bit and I I just quit you know I I quit with I'm not going to say I didn't have anything in my back pocket I was able to go to Morgan and cover the Ravens uh that Mm -hmm. year and get some on-air time there but then after that year Chuck brought me back and he brought me back to cover the Orioles and the Ravens and then that Mm -hmm. summer he gave me my show Shaking It Up Sports and it's funny, people always come to me when they see me like, man, I don't know how you do that show by yourself, man. It's so tough. And I tell them, hey, it is tough. It is very tough. Um, mm-hmm. But number 
but I, I didn't know that I would be doing it by myself this long. Chuck originally asked me, like, do you have a co-host? And I'm like, no, nah, I don't have anybody off the top of my head. Yeah. Um, but I'm thinking, like, if maybe if somebody comes across him, he'll throw them on to the show and we'll kind of, you know, I'll have a co-host. Mm -hmm. But it's kind of taken off and they keep cutting my mic on. And so, you know, I, I guess I'm doing <laughs> something right. Uh, but nah, I, it, it's been cool, man. So it's been a fast pace. But I just gave that long story to say, man, that, you know, it it's a it's always going to be a tough journey, especially when what you want is something big. It's not something easy to get it. And I, I mean, yeah. even me, I'm still not done trying to get to where I want to be. Mm -hmm. uh, but I know a lot of people can can get down because things may not go their way. They may take a L here or there. Oh, and yeah. I always try to tell my story, man, just because um, I was in a dark place at one point and I didn't think that I'd be able to do anything. And then, you know, now here I am and I got people that I've never even met before coming up to me talking about how they listen to my show. And I appreciate everybody that does. Oh, yeah. I love it. I love it. I, I appreciate you sharing that. I remember... um. I first got put on to you uh, early on last year um, from uh, the show that you had did with Rita. And mm -hmm. um, I forgot where I had initially saw you at, but I, I do remember um, going to training camp last year. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I was sitting behind, I was in the bleachers with, with the fans. You know, as regular people, we got to sit in the bleachers yeah. and stuff. We get fans, <laughs> but the, the special people, they, they sit in front of the rope. Nah. So I, I, I saw Jameson Hensley, I saw Jeff Zrebic, um, I saw, I saw Rita too. I seen this one dude, I see, he had dreads, but he, he was clean. I said, whoa, I said, it. I said hold up, that, that's, is that Cordell? And I was like, hey, what's up, Cordell? And he was like, yo, and I'm, I'm sure you're probably like, who, who is that? But it was, it was cool though, but I was like, oh, that, that, that's, that's him. But, but yeah, you, you were clean. And every time that I seen you at an event, well, you clean, man. You clean, like even yeah, right appreciate now. appreciate it. Yeah, but. Nah, I, man. <laughs> and 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 I, and I love that. I love that especially because I love when um like you 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 created your own lane. You don't went through a lot of different things and went through a lot of different hoops and whatnot. But you created your own lane. But especially like in sports journalism, um, there can be sort of a uh, people can feel like there, there's a certain look um mm -hmm. for that a journalist should have. Uh, but you came, you clean, had your own style and whatnot. And and, and I love that. I love that for you. And I, I didn't even know the backstory. But I'm glad you got to share the backstory. I, I appreciated hearing that. So good stuff. Now, um, sure. how, how has it been? And, and congratulations, uh, by the way, because uh, you are a, a new, a pretty new father. How has yeah. that been just balancing fatherhood with work and, and just really making that adjustment? Man, it's it, it's been just that, an adjustment. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, and he, my, my son, six months this week. Uh, and those six months have flown by. Yeah, it goes fast. It's, it's definitely, it's definitely challenging, man. Um, to be honest with you, because a lot of the work, you, you know, in this field, we have unorthodox hours, mm -hmm. and so you know, we don't. It's not a regular nine to five or or a structured situation. Like we, I could work anywhere from eight to nine hours in a day to just three hours in a day, you know, it, it really depends on what's going on. And right. a lot of my schedule right now is midday uh, because especially if I'm at the Orioles, I'm there maybe around two thirty, three 3 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm there for everything leading up to the post game. And then I have my show that isn't over until nine o'clock. So, you know, I'm not getting home until around nine thirty, mm -hmm. and the baby usually is asleep. You know what I'm saying? So it's like I, I do feel like time gets away from me sometimes mm -hmm. because I, I really um, my, the most time I really get to be around him is in the mornings when I'm getting him ready to take him to his grandmother's house. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, I drive him over there and stuff like that. So I try to appreciate every moment that I that I do have mm -hmm. with them, especially when he's awake to know that I'm there. Right. Um, but, yeah, man, I'd be lying if I said it's not tough sometimes knowing that. I'm only going to see him maybe for an uh, hour or two throughout the day because by the time I get home, he's knocked out. Mm -hmm. And I'm not really – of course, I'm not trying to wake him up because that's going oh, yeah. to be a situation <laughs> that I'm going to have to deal with. So, you know what I'm saying? I, I just uh, – it's definitely a balance, um, mm -hmm. and I'm I'm trying to kind of adjust to it on the fly. And I'll yeah. admit, I'm not even – I'm, I'm not even doing – 
as great at, at it as I should be. Um, but I'm, I'm like I said, I'm trying to piece it together on the fly right now mm -hmm. uh, because with this is a very busy time of year with the Orioles now and OTAs getting started up and mm -hmm. mini camp and training camp right around the corner. Oh, yeah. I mean, the days are only going to get longer. So um, any moment that I do get to kind of have when I'm in here with him, I'm, I'm like I said, and even my girl too, just trying to appreciate it as much as I can mm -hmm. uh, because that work life balance, especially when you have a family, uh, right. it, 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 it's, it's tough. Mm -hmm. That's true. Um, and I, I know it sounds really cliche and whatnot, but it, it is important to cherish those moments, uh, especially mm -hmm. when you have a young kid. Cause I know like with my son, um, with, cause, cause I, I cover the Ravens, but I do it from home, but still it, right. it can get very, very busy, especially like, cause mm -hmm. Ravens are the type of team. They'll be quiet for a while. They'll be quiet. They'll be chilling, whatnot. Then all of a sudden, if they make one move, then they do another one. They do another one. They do another one. Yep. They, just, they, they throw everything on you at once. So stuff can get real busy real fast. And there have been some days where I'll be working. Um, and then he'll just he'll be out, whether he be in the living room, whether he be in his room or whatever. Uh, and he'll just be there. And and my wife, she 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 doesn't work. Um, but so she's home too. But um, I, I will still feel kind of bad because I'm like, man, like a, a, a day can just pass like that. Time can go yep. by so quickly when, when you're just working, working, working. And there'll be some days where I'm like, no, I, I just that 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 that's that's gotta wait. Um, that, that, that's got, I got to put that on hold right now. Cause I really got to spend time uh, with him and really with them. Uh, and that's why, um, taking time off is important. Balance is important. Mm -hmm. But I know, I know with, especially with a young one though, it's, it's a tough, tough adjustment. I remember when he was born, <laughs> it threw everything off, like everything. Yeah. Cause it's just, it's crazy because they, they make your schedule. You don't make your schedule. No they, they make your right. schedule and they make their own schedule and whatnot. So I get it. Um, you talked about adjusting on the fly. Um, that's something that, uh, just segue into the Ravens now. That's something that sometimes it seems like they struggle with, uh, mm -hmm. because over the past couple of years, um, there were times when under the, the previous offense, uh, it felt like there weren't enough adjustments on the fly. Um, but now they let go of Greg Roman. Uh, they brought in Todd Munkin. And just w what are some of the differences that you expect to see uh, with this new offense under Todd Munkin? Uh, what are some of the big changes that you expect to see from the Ravens moving forward on offense? Well, the number one thing is creativity. I mean, mm -hmm. and, and, and specifically in the passing game and in the mm -hmm. red zone. Uh, Greg Roman is a mastermind with the run game. Nobody oh, yeah. can take that away from him. We we can talk about all the the downsides of a Greg Roman led offense and mm -hmm. the way that it pretty much, you know, got worse as the years went on. But that running game is something you can't take away from him. Um, mm -hmm. That said, this is a passing league. I, right. I I really believe that, and Lamar said it the other day. Running can only get you, but so far, and it's mm -hmm. true. It's great to be able to run the ball. You have to be able to run the ball because it helps with possession. It helps you dictate the pace of the game. You mm -hmm. know, it, 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 it helps you kind of control the game. But if you're talking about going from being a good regular season team to being a true Super Bowl contender, right. you have to be able to pass the ball whenever you want to or whenever you have to. And that's what I'm looking for from Todd Munkin. He, he, his introductory press conference, he talked about balance and how everybody, can, or people can kind of think that balance means 50% run, 50% pass. But no, balance means being able to do both things well, being able mm -hmm. to do them when you have to be able to do them. So for me, it starts with creativity. I, the Ravens are too good of a team, even despite them, having the deficiencies at wide receiver over right. the years. They're too good of a team when you have Lamar Jackson at your quarterback. Mm -hmm. They can put so much pressure on a defense. It's no reason they should have been struggling the way that they were last year in the red zone. It was just mind-blowing to me. And they mm -hmm. run the ball so well that they get into they get inside the, the 20 or the 10, and all of a sudden the, the, the run game is cut off. It's, mm -hmm. It was amazing to me to see. Um, so I'm looking for more creativity to kind of have defenses off balance to um, to to go against tendencies, a lot more tendency breakers, because there was too many times in that Greg Roman offense where I would see them line up 
and I know where the ball is going. That mm. shouldn't happen. <laughs> um, so, you know, I, uh, spacing is a big mm. thing that Todd Munkin talked about. And you get, mm. you get guys like Zay Flowers, you get guys like Odell Beckham, you want spacing because these are guys that can make something. Rashad Bateman as well. You know, they can make things happen in the open mm-hmm. field. Um, and it and it helps Lamar as well because things aren't as crowded in his vision. Right. You don't have mm-hmm. too many guys running into each other and the route concepts and everything like that. And in terms of him, be, whenever he does decide to take off and run, it's going to be even tougher to get to Lamar if the field is already spaced out and, and all the receivers are all kind of scattered all over the field. It sets it up for Lamar to have more one-on-ones in the open field with a linebacker or safety whoever they choose to spy on, because of course they're always going to keep a spy on them. Yeah. You know, it, it just makes it easier for him. So, and it, and it sounds like more player friendly Lamar talking about being able to call audibles at the line, being able to hot route at the line, which is weird to me because I specifically asked Greg Roman last year towards the back end of the season mm-hmm. or before Lamar got hurt. Um, how much control does he have in the offense? And, and he said he has total control. But it doesn't sound like Lamar had total control when you when you hear him talk about it. So those are some of the things that I'm expecting to see. And I can tell you, and I know a lot of the other beat reporters have talked about this, uh, being at OTAs last week, because I wasn't at any of the football schools, but being at OTAs, seeing Todd Munkin on the field during practice, you hear him. He He's the only coach outside of maybe Chris Horton and Joe D that you are going to hear all throughout practice. I mean, and and Todd Munkin is the loudest one out there. And it's not necessarily him getting on guys. Mm -hmm. It's A, he's passionate. He, You could tell he loves football and he loves coaching. Um, But it's also, look, they're installing a new offense and he's Mm -hmm. on everything, everything. And he's, he was, he was really on the wide receivers the other day. And we know he has his history with wide receivers as a former wide receiver coach. Um, But Every detail, every small detail, he is he is on it with them right now. So um, I, I think that this could be a good thing for all of these guys, including Lamar, because Tom Munkin may be the first coach that I've seen Lamar have at this level that may hold him accountable if he's not doing what he's supposed to do. He seems like the type of coach that he doesn't care who you are. Mm. If he has something to say to you, he's going to say it. I like that. I like that. Now, you, you talked about – um. Uh, Zay Flowers, uh, Odell Beckham Jr., um, some of the different additions that the Ravens have uh, had this offseason. How do how you feel overall about what they've done specifically uh, in the wide receiver department this year? So I've had people – I've seen people like, oh, the Ravens have a great wide receiver core or uh, the Ravens have maybe the best wide receiver core in the division. Oh, well. I'm not ready to go there. Yeah, I don't know about that. I'm not ready to go there. Now, better is the word that I use. They have mm-hmm. a better receiving core. They are improved, yeah. no doubt about it. And it's tough not to be better based off what they've had. Um, mm-hmm. But getting Odell Beckham, it's a pretty good signing. And I think that signing goes beyond just the on the field aspect. It was a recruiting tool for right. Lamar. It's mm-hmm. it's to kind of help Lam- lure Lamar in. That said. If if you put some truth serum in them and you ask them would they have rather gone to get Odell or waited out to see what happens with the, what, what would happen with the DeAndre Hopkins situation, <laughs> I think you get a unique answer from them. Mm. But it's a good pickup. It's a good mm-hmm. pickup. Uh, mm-hmm. It's a veteran guy, a quarterback-friendly wide receiver that knows how to play in this league, knows how to get open. Obviously, he has major injury concerns. Mm-hmm. Uh, he missed last year completely. Um, and that's the one thing with me. Your top two receivers, essentially, are major inju- have major injury flags. Oh, uh, Rashad mm-hmm. Bateman, I get it. He doesn't want to be labeled as an injury-prone player. I understand that. Mm-hmm. But the proof is in the pudding. I mean, he, he has not been able to finish a season, play a complete season, since he's been drafted. And he's going into year three. It's a pivotal year. They have to decide whether or not they're going to pick up his fifth-year option right. pretty soon, you know, at the end of the year. So, I mean, this is a pivotal year for him. Um, I, again, I, I do like the signers. I do think that they'll be better than what they were. Zay Flowers looks good. He looked good the other day, but it's OTAs. It's May. Got to really pump the brakes 
They're not mm-hmm. even in pads right now. Right. You can't. You can barely even breathe on these guys. So it's easy <laughs> to get open. It's easy to get open right now. Right. <laughs> um, but I, I, I do think that he is a guy that has that game breaking ability. He, he has big time yak ability, which goes along with what Rashad Bateman has. Mm-hmm. Beckham even has it. Andrews has it. Likely has it. So to get a Zay Flowers there they now have a lot of different guys that can hurt you after the catch. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I think he's another guy that's going to be tough to get to in the open field. He's very shifty. Uh, he, he plays bigger than he is. Um, mm-hmm. So I, I, Zay Flowers was, was my favorite receiver in the class. So oh. I, I was definitely uh, pleased with that, with that draft pickup. All in all, I think they'll be good. They'll get the boost naturally just from having a new offense. I think you look around the league and you see – what NFL offenses do when they come with something new. They they get that boost. And I think that the Ravens will get an even bigger boost because it's a morale lifter too. Lamar signed, no more contract questions. Oh, yeah. Odell Beckham, <laughs> you know, and uh, uh, is here. You know, a, a new offensive coordinator, no more Greg Roman. Like, it's a big morale boost, I think, on the mm. offensive side of the ball. And I think it's a lot of guys that are this year, on the specifically on the offensive side of the ball for the Ravens, they have a lot to prove. Mm-hmm. Rashad Bateman, I talked about how he's got a lot to prove right now, not just right. to, 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 you know, to the Ravens, but I think a lot of people, we all know Rashad Bateman can be a good player, but mm-hmm. we just don't know how good. We haven't really been, been able to see it consistently enough. Beckham, he's been out the, the league a year. You know, he's got to prove, he's on a one-year prove-it deal right now. You know, so he's mm-hmm. definitely got a lot to show. Uh, J.K. Dobbins is in a contract year right mm-hmm. now. You know, um, Lamar just got signed, but I'm sure he wants to show, like, you know, hey, they they finally got me some receivers. They they went and gave me a a, a offensive coordinator that has a more pro style offense. They paid me. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's time to go get it. So I think it's a lot of guys that have a lot to prove this year, and you know, maybe that in itself will give the Ravens the juice to get to where they want to be. Mm, good, real good points. Um. And you spoke about the Ravens, a lot of them wanting to prove themselves. Um, you brought up a, a player that has proven himself in this league uh, throughout his tenure in the NFL, and that's DeAndre Hopkins. Um, mm-hmm. Now, of course, he uh, just recently officially uh, was released from the Arizona Cardinals. And there's been a lot of speculation on where he could end up. Um, of course, there's been talk about the Bills, been talk about the Chiefs, uh, and there's been some other teams thrown in there too, but I know those have been the main two. But you were the GM, if you were Cordell hmm. DeCosta, the Costa, what would you uh <laughs> what would you do? Would, would you go after a DeAndre Hopkins? Because I know that there's been a lot of discourse amongst Ravens fans and Ravens people. Oh, should they do it? Yes. Should they do it? No. How could it affect this guy, that guy? What could it bring to the team? Is it overkill? How do you feel about the potential if the Ravens were to add a DeAndre Hopkins? Yeah, I mean, well. Full disclaimer, I, I saw what Jeff Zreback put in the athletic about the Ravens. They they did their due diligence, and it looks like they're going to pass. I've heard the same thing, to be honest mm-hmm. with you. I've heard that they did check in on it, uh, but there were some things that I think kind of turned them off a little oh, bit. Okay. Um, I so uh, I don't know if it'll happen. Who knows? Who knows? But that aside, if I'm the GM, I'm an aggressive guy. You know, I'm all about, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm all about, man, like being as good of a team, putting together the best team I can possibly put together. Mm. The Ravens have no problems getting to the playoffs. The Ravens have, they could right. win 10 games in their sleep. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's not their issue. Their issue is getting to that next level, right. getting to, yeah, they could beat the Chiefs in the regular season. They could beat the Bengals in the regular season, but can they beat these teams in January? That's the question. Those are totally different teams in the month of January. Mm -hmm. Um, Even the Bills right now, you know, you got to throw them in there as well. So that's my only thing. The Ravens roster right now is improved, but you add DeAndre Hopkins to this team, I mean – you're, you're dreaming big, if nothing else right now. You're dreaming big if you get DeAndre Hopkins. And we can't ignore the fact that, again, their top two wide receivers have major injury questions. 
if yeah. those two guys, God forbid, go down, the mm. Ravens are right back to square one at the wide receiver position. They're right back to putting guys on the field that they don't want to have to play. You put DeAndre Hopkins out there. You bring another quarterback-friendly wide receiver to the fold. You bring, in my opinion, people are talking about he's losing the step. He's, 30, he's probably 31, if not 31 already. He's naturally lost a step just because of father time. But this dude is still, in my opinion, a top seven to eight wide receiver in the NFL. He walks in the best wide receiver on the Ravens. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to get him. And – I don't like – I could buy some of the things that people have said in terms of why they wouldn't bring D in. The one thing I can't buy is what about Bateman and how is he going to feel? I'm not allowing Rashad Bateman – and no disrespect to Bateman because, right, right. again, I think Bateman can be a really good player. I do. Mm-hmm. But he's going into year three, and I still don't know who Rashad Bateman is. I will. I cannot allow him and Odell Beckham to handicap my team. I'm not. I'm not looking at it like because at, at what point does it become? Oh, I need to get my numbers so I can get paid. And at what point does it become? It's all about winning. Is it about winning or is it about getting your numbers up? People are talking about Mark Andrews is going to be upset because his targets will go down. I don't know if that's the case. Maybe, but. Mark Andrews is still, I still think Mark Andrews is going to be the number one option in this offense, even mm-hmm. right now with all the new weapons they've added. I got to see it to believe it to see Mark Andrews take a back seat in this <laughs> offense, to be honest. That's that's Lamar's guy. Yeah. Um, but I think that there's enough. I get that there's only one football, mm-hmm. but there's enough to go around to where, sure, nobody may be putting up all pro type numbers in the offense. That's fine. Mm-hmm. But they'll be the toughest offense to guard in the NFL with that type of receiving core, that type of running game with J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards and Lamar Jackson, and then just having Lamar as your quarterback in general. I mean, of course, it, unless health gets in the way, right. D Hop on this team is is big time. I would have a hard time ranking teams in the NFL and not putting the Ravens in my top five if D Hop is on this roster. Yeah, and I man. get, and again, and I, I, I get they have other holes because people are talking about edge rusher and cornerback. Mm-hmm. That's true, but the Ravens have tried to be as balanced as possible. You can't, you can't cover every hole. And while those are needs, there is nobody that's available as an edge rusher or a cornerback that's going to be more of an impact on this team than DeAndre Hopkins. I'd rather get more bang for my buck and spend money on a guy that I know is going to be able is more times than not is going to make me feel good about paying him mm-hmm. as opposed to going and just getting a veteran guy as an edge rusher that realistically is going to be a backup yeah. or another corner that most likely is going to be a backup as well. And the corners that are, even if we're talking about Marcus Peters, I'd rather go get DeAndre Hopkins than bring Marcus Peters back right now, to be honest with you. I'm sorry. Yeah, man. Um, DeAndre Hopkins, uh, and just really anybody, well, not anybody, but DeAndre Hopkins would open so much up for so many people. Um, and, and I feel like with the more weapons you add, you add the more options you have. Uh, and when mm. you have more options, then that allows your offense to be that much more diverse. Uh, so not everybody is like, all right, we, we cover 89, we straight. We ain't got to worry about nobody else. No, you got mm-hmm. other guys that, that, that you got to worry about too. So that, that's a beautiful thing. So we'll see what happens with that. Um, now, uh, just to close it out with the Ravens and their offense, their quarterback, we went over the wide receivers, spoke about the tight ends, some, the running backs, uh, and the offensive line. Do you think that this offense and, and it being a new offense too, new offensive coordinator as well. So new mindset Mm -hmm. going into this season. Do you think, um, that right now they have enough to get with health out the way? But mm-hmm. do you think they have enough to get it done? Mm. <laughs> That's a deep I, side I right think, there. <laughs> I, I think they they could. I'll, I'll say they could. Um, okay. If we're taking health out of the equation, right. they could. Because the Ravens have done a lot with less in the past. Yeah. So I, I have to imagine that with 
the improvements that they have been able to make so far, mm-hmm. I am willing to say that as long as health doesn't get in the way, I, I do believe that they could be in the fight. I think they could be in the fight. I think that they could, I mean, obviously I believe this is a playoff caliber team, but then again, you get to the playoffs and it's about, can you beat the Bengals? Can you beat the Chiefs? Can you beat the Bills? Shoot. Can you beat, you know, some of these other teams now like the Dolphins or yeah. the Jaguars mm-hmm. or maybe even the Jets? I don't know. Like, you know, I, it's, it's a lot of other teams now in the fold. Um, they're going to have – can they sustain? And a lot of these other AFC teams have juggernaut offenses. Mm-hmm. So the Ravens are going to have to score. That's why, for me, I'd rather have the best offense than the best defense. Give oh, yeah, me a top sure. five offense and a top 10 defense over a top five defense and a top 15 offense or so. Like, that's yeah. that's where I'm at uh, with it. So, you know, they have the weapons, man. And, and Lamar – gives you the ability because he's that he's that x factor like he's i'm not Mm. i think patrick mahomes is the best quarterback in the league and i don't i don't even think it's close but he is that superman for the chiefs he he's able to do more than what the the paper says the Chiefs should be able to do that's what lamar does for the ravens they have that guy that can kind of put the cape on and make something crazy happen happen so when you have a guy like that on your team Mm -hmm. sure the sky's the limit the the sky's the limit so you know the bills have that with josh allen like i said Mm -hmm. the chiefs have it as well um joe burrow out there with the Bengals, you know and jamar chase is another guy that could they have multiple guys for real that could kind of put the the cape on for them so you know i i think that the ravens do have their guys and i think jk dobbins when it's all said and done because Nobody's really talking about him this offseason. Um, mm-hmm. But I, I think he is primed for a great year as long as health allows him uh, to mm-hmm. do it. Uh, that in a mix with a, a much improved – I'm anticipating a much improved passing game. I do, I do think the Ravens could be in the fight. Okay, okay. And, yeah, I, I do think they can as well. I think um, one of the biggest things that has gotten in their way, um, even beyond the offense, beyond the defense, uh, has been injuries. Oh, it's really been injuries because um we saw with like even with Lamar um in that Bills playoff game he got knocked out with the concussion, uh, right. and then the past two seasons uh, he ain't been able to be around uh, at the end. Um, but yeah, he has shown and they have shown like when Lamar's there, they can rock with anybody. Oh, yeah, I like mean anybody. They were, they were they were like I think eight and five last year when Lamar got hurt. And then the year before, they were first in the AFC when Lamar got hurt. So, I mean, the proof is in the pudding, you know. Mm -hmm. And they are a dominant team, or they are a team that wins games, if nothing else, Mm -hmm. if eight is on the field. If he's not, it's a different story. (laughs) It's a much different story. It's a whole different book. Uh, But, yeah, man. Anyway, Cordell, I really, really, really appreciate you coming on. Um, Before you get out of here, let everybody know one more time where they can find you at. Yeah, man. Appreciate the invite, man. For this sure. is cool. Anytime you need me, man, just just hit me up. Um, my you can fat you can catch me on Twitter and Instagram at Cordell Woodland, C O R D E L L W O O D L A N D. You can also catch my show weeknights on 1057 The Fan, Shaking It Up Sports. Uh, you can download the Odyssey app. You can listen wherever uh you are. So if you're not in a car, the Odyssey app allows you to listen live as well as rewind mm-hmm. to hear something you missed. Cool, man. And I will link all that stuff down below in the description so y'all can follow him on Twitter and IG uh, and then check out his show as well. Appreciate you, team. Keep it clean. Make sure you go follow him on all his stuff. And we out. Like you up, we play.
play football. Huh? Okay. I'm a fanatic. Uh-huh. You see, we got the magic. Hey, yeah, my boys are it. savage and open challenge and madden. <laughs> Let's go. Make a rage quit, exit out the door.